me that I'm going to talk with you about. Our code, which takes people to our website. And in the back, it says, do you know that there's a God in heaven that loves you? I am a servant of God, has the church's address, the church's phone number. He, he has preached, taken it upon himself to print out a thousand of these. So if you want some, get some from David. I always carry, I always carry something with my phone number on it in my, in my left-hand pocket because if you pay attention, doors are opening all around us. And if we're prepared to put something in somebody's hand so that they can contact us again, there will be more conversations. How many people in the room this morning? 60, 70, 80, I don't know. But uh, multiply that by 100, we could contact, we could, be, we could be sharing the gospel and sharing the church's phone number with many, many people if we would just kind of pay attention and, and in our conversations look for those open doors. And let me share one powerful phrase. I've shared it before. Repeat after me. I'm going to church on Sunday. You want to come? You don't have to say it with a southern accent. Yeah. 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 Want to come? Okay. It's, it's, as simple, it's as simple as that. And let me add one thing to this. If you're feeling extra courageous... Make this personal, put your cell phone number on it as well, because you're the one that they met. You're the one that they have the contact with, and you're the one that if you've had a positive conversation with them, they don't want to talk to the church. They want to talk to you. You are the church. Father in heaven, we thank you that you brought us here today. We thank you that we belong to you. We thank you for the privilege of sharing Christ with many, many other people. We pray, Lord, that you will use us, that you will help us, that you will give us boldness, and that we might see great fruit, lasting fruit, kingdom fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. Good morning. First song this morning is going to be number 162, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. <clears throat> All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the Yeah. 
right. <clears throat> Number 200. Uh, 200. Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts. <clears throat> Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts, thou fount of life, thou light of men, from all the bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to song of invitation or encouragement after the lesson that's going to be 524 I know whom I have believed <clears throat> but before our scripture reading and the lesson let's sing number 75 I sing the mighty power of God I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines. There's not a plant or flower 
Scripture reading will be out of Acts 19, verses 11 and 12. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Good morning. Let's pray. Father in heaven, open our eyes that we may see, open our ears that we may hear, open our hearts that we may obey, be fruitful, and multiply. Fill us with your spirit, fill us with your joy. Teach us, Father, to be cheerful givers of our time, of our treasure, of our hearts. And Lord, augment our ministry here. Increase our influence as we increase our obedience to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is alive and well and working in the world today, amen? amen? So in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, we read the following. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him, given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. A day is coming when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess the supremacy, the Lordship of Jesus, the Messiah. He is Lord, even though some refuse to recognize that. But someday, sooner than we might expect, very soon if we compare it to eternity, which is a long, long time, forever, someday all, all will recognize that Jesus is Lord. It sounds like I'm beginning with a conclusion, doesn't it? Well, it is the conclusion of the matter. He is Lord. And that fact is really very important to recognize in these days, these pagan days, these days in which witchcraft is promoted, adored, pursued, and practiced, even in our country, the United States of America, where the pilgrims came to establish a Christian nation. What began, what began as a pursuit of God is now devolved into something else in many places. When I came to Maine 21 years ago, I can't say that I was surprised to discover that there was a whole lot of witchcraft there. Um, fact is, there are people all over this land who do the same. But the openness of it, the boldness of it, it made me sad. Even our fam family doctor, a lady we really, really liked and respected her medical uh, knowledge, she was caught up in that false religion. I'm glad to say that before we left Maine, she told Kim that she was kind of rethinking things and moving in our, in our direction, and I hope she con continued that search, and I hope she did find God. So I guess the second conclusion that I'm going to give you at the beginning is to shine where you are. Wherever you are, shine. I don't know what you're surrounded with where you are, but shine that light that is in Christ, that is Christ in you, and you never can tell what that might uh, bring about. You never can tell the influence that might come, not through the power of your debate and argumentation, but through the power of your witness 
that you are going to be faithful until death. You never can tell. In addition to shining, I think it's important that we need to remember that even though Christ's supremacy will be fully actualized at the end of days, and that there's a struggle during these days where there are many that refuse to acknowledge Christ's supremacy, I think it's it's important that we recognize that we're not without protection. He is and has been and will be stronger than any evil spirits. He's bigger. As the old tune in Veggie Tales says, God is bigger than the boogeyman. Some of you might relate to that. He was casting demons out in the Gospels over and over. He gave his apostles power to cast out evil spirits as he sent them out two by two. And when he ascended to the right hand of the Father, he left those he left behind with authority to preach the gospel to every creature, pre- to cre- preach the gospel to every creature, but also he gave them authority over the evil spirits. Power and authority that was evident for everyone to see. Acts 19, verses 11 through 16 is where I'm going to be reading. Follow along with me. It says there, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from the body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. I've got to confess, this is one of my favorite Bible stories. In it, we see clearly that Christ is over all. He's over all. At the name of Jesus, evil spirits must flee. They had to flee. Except in the case of these Jewish exorcists who were using the name of Jesus. They'd seen the power in his name. They used his name. And even, in fact, even to make sure they were calling on the correct Jesus, they included the words, Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They wanted to be very precise in their language. Didn't help, did it? Didn't do a whole lot of good, did it? Beaten, naked, fleeing, shamed. What happened? Why was the name of Jesus not effective for them? Well, the problem wasn't with the name of Jesus. The problem was with those who were using his name, and you probably know what I'm talking about. But hang on for now. We're going to come back to that. In a, we're going to come back to that in just a little bit. Let's read on. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them. And it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Okay, so, so Paul was working miracles and signs and wonders The sick were healed, even by aprons and handkerchiefs that were brought from Paul. Paul wasn't even there, but handkerchiefs and and, and aprons that were brought from Paul to the sick, and they were healed. Kind of like when people were lining up just, just hoping that the shadow of Peter would pass by them so that they would be healed. Remember that? Kind of like when that woman fought her way through the crowd thinking, oh, if I can just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I can be well. That's power, is it not? And they were not only healed. If they were tormented by an evil spirit, 
they had to flee. Christ is over all of that. Christ is over every evil spirit. The manifestation of God's power was so profound that even these non-believing Jews were tempted, and they did attempt to use the name of Jesus to cast out those spirits. Didn't work out very well for them, but what happened, what happened as a result of all of that? God was glorified. Fear came upon all. Wouldn't that be a cause for some of that fear, seeing those naked men running away from the evil spirits? <laughs> I'd be afraid of that. The name of Jesus was magnified. Sins were confessed. People were called, called to submit themselves to Christ. Books of the magic arts were burned. In Ephesus, it was a city of great paganism, and they took their books 50, worth 50,000 pieces of silver. I've not calculated the dollar amount of that, but that's a, that's a treasure trove of books, and they burned them not because the state required it, not because any other than the power of God required it. So they voluntarily burned those books, which they could have sold and gotten money for, but they got rid of them. And the, Lord, and the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Why? Because Christ is over all. He was over all then. He's over all now. And he'll be even more overall in eternity to come. He is supreme. Satan is defeated and Jesus is Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. But church, I told you I'd be coming back to this. Why did those evil spirits have the power and authority to beat up those Jewish exorcists who were using the name of Jesus to cast them out? Remember what the spirit said? Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? That's a question. They didn't even know him, these spirits. They didn't even recognize him. Why? See, we see that they were willing to use the name of Jesus. They saw that power. But were they living in his name? Were they walking in his name? Did they follow Christ did they obey Christ? No. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 7? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does. Say that word, does. Does, does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will come to me in that day, will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. See, long and short of it is that they were not obedient disciples of Christ. They were only users of the name of Christ. Jesus didn't know them, and neither did the evil spirits. They thought they had discovered the perfect magic words to use. Use the name of Jesus. Didn't work out very well. Brothers and sisters, that approach to God will not work out very well for us either. Jesus' name is not a name to be used like magic words or a talisman or some sort of good luck charm. That's not who he is. His name is holy. His name is powerful. His name is a name to which we must submit. His name is a name that we must obey because He is Lord. See, claiming Christ but not following Christ is not going to work out any better for us than it did for these Jewish exorcists. It will expose us to a world of hurt and it'll jeopardize our witness, and it'll even jeopardize our home in heaven. Are we walking in the name of Jesus as we claim him? Do we obey his commands? He, what do you say? If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. 
Do we obey his commands as we claim that we walk with him? When we discover that we're not obeying his commands, do we repent and do we return to the straight and narrow path? Or do we merely present ourselves as his followers, yet more in word than in deed? See, the answer to these questions will tell us a lot about who we really follow, God or ourselves. And if we're following ourselves, we're actually really following the adversary. Let us learn not only to advertise our allegiance to Christ, but also to obey him. For better or worse, I don't have a whole lot more to say to you this morning. Who is Lord? Jesus. Who is supreme? Christ. Who is over all? Christ. And in that, that's a powerful, powerful blessing. But church, learn from these seven sons of Sceva. Because just to acknowledge him in word offers us no protection. He demands our allegiance. He demands our obedience. He demands not only that we acknowledge him with our words, but in our hearts and with our actions. Let's talk to our Father in heaven about it. Lord, we thank you for this powerful message in the book of Acts, chapter 19, where you show yourself to be over everything. And so, Lord, we thank you that we need not fear the ugliness out there. We need not fear the spiritual darkness that's out there because you're over all of it. And yet, Lord, I think we need to remember that we, we, that we must fear you. So help us, Father, to remember that we need your help and that you require our allegiance and obedience. Father, where we have wandered, we pray, Father, that you would forgive us and restore us so that we might once again be under your umbrella of protection. We pray, Father, that where you're calling us to do more, that you would forgive us for doing less, and that you'd open our eyes and open our hearts to all of the opportunities that are around us to do more. We pray, Father, that, that you would, above all, help us to recognize that you are Lord over all. And therefore, you must be Lord over our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just so you know, I refilled the baptistry this morning. Not because I knew that there would some be someone that wanted to be baptized into Christ this morning, but because I think it's appropriate to be prepared for that, for that possibility. I won't lie to you and tell you that the water's warm. <laughs> it's cold. I will tell you that in a 2,000-year-old document called the Didache, they claim that it was better to be baptized in cold water than in warm anyway. So you got a bargain today. If you, <laughs> My hope is that you've been delaying and taking that step, that simple step of obedience to be immersed into Christ. Don't delay any longer. The cold you feel will be, will be um, just for a moment. And you'll dry off. And your sins will be washed away. So if you have delayed in taking care of that business with God, don't delay any longer. He's over all. And there's sp spiritual help and power from God to be a better person if you come to him and be made a part of his church. And it's not only spiritual help on an individual basis. You'd be surrounded by us who love you and who are willing to help you in your walk. If you've wandered away from Christ and you have sinned against him and you want to make that right in a public uh, forum such as ours this morning, come on up 
and let's talk about it. Whatever your need is, come to Jesus while we stand and sing. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made no, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know come forward, Wendy has asked for the prayers of the church that she may be more obedient in de deed and not in and not just in words. She wants to really grow in her discipleship. And so I know y'all all are going to pray for her. And we will pray for her in just a moment. And uh, Denise came forward with something that I uh, 
It's one of these things that I wish we weren't broadcasting over YouTube, then I could tell you the whole story, but I really don't feel like I can tell you the whole story. She just has made a new friend recently, though, who was the um, uh, wife of a uh, pastor who is not alive anymore. And because of some very traumatic things that happened, and you can ask Denise about it, she no longer is uh, involved with God and worship and with people. And this is some of the, this has come into and it come into Denise's orbit. And I can't give you her name, but I just want to ask you to pray for Denise's friend. Is that fair enough, Denise? That's probably the best way to do it, right? Uh, because she will be seeing her again, and she wants to shine, shine the light of Christ. And again, listen, we may have great arguments, but sometimes just being there is the best argument. Sometimes loving is, just, is, is the best argument. There'll be time to have these debates and, and straighten people out, okay? But the first thing that's got to happen is you've, you've got to win their hearts. You know that from raising children, don't you? If, if you lose their hearts, you've lost the battle. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we, we praise you that um, Wendy has this uh, desire well up, welling up in, within her to be a stronger, a better, uh, a more uh, useful disciple of yours. And she's asked for us to pray for her, and we will. And we pray, Father, that you'll just uh, go above and beyond anything Wendy's ever asking and thinking in the answer to this prayer. We, we, we know that your resources, Father, are infinite. And so we will have everything that we need to accomplish your purpose. And that's what Wendy wants to do. And regarding um, Denise's new friend, Lord, we pray that you'll open up doors. We pray that you'll open her heart. We pray that you'll give Denise the wisdom she needs to know what to do and what not to do, what to say and what not to say. And uh, we pray, Father, that you will act in this situation and draw this uh, hurting person all the way to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Prayer our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper. Let's sing number 344, Low in the Grave. <laughs> Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, wait in the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. And he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watched his bed, Jesus my Savior. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep its prey. Jesus, my Savior, He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up 
from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. I'd like to read a scripture. This is from Mark, and this is, of course, in the upper room where Jesus is uh, eating the Passover with his disciples. While they were eating, he took some bread, and after blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, which of course is where he was arrested. Um, notice that he blesses the bread and he gives thank for the, thanks for the cup. And when it says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, that means he's going to die. That's what that phrase means. So our, our Lord was getting his disciples ready for him to uh, pay the price for us. And we are to remember that every first day of the week in this fashion. Thanks, Will. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are. We take this time, Father, to commemorate what our Lord and Savior did on our behalf. The all, He paid the ultimate sacrifice for for us, and we didn't deserve it, but He was is fulfilling a promise that you had made to mankind that we would have redemption and that we have the source of redemption was Jesus. He took it upon himself to follow your commands because he loved you and he loved us. We're grateful, Father, for that sacrifice and we contemplate as we take his, this bread which is his body, and we hope and pray, Father, that we'll live as he did, take up our cross, too, so that others can come to know of your son and of the love that you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we take this fruit of the vine, which signifies the blood of your son Jesus that was shed on the cross. It set the new covenant, and it washed away our sins. May we take it in a manner that is worthy to you, that gives you honor and glory, and thank you for the sacrifice that you did for us, so that one day we may be in heaven with you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless your name and we thank you for being the God that you are. We thank you that there is power within your name because your name is holy. You have power above all things. You reign and Jesus at your right hand reigns as well. We are in such good hands, Lord, when we are part of your body and when we are your children. And Lord, we know that being your children requires obedience to your word, to do those things you've asked us to do as Jesus was sacrificed and set the terms to go from being dead to alive. And Lord, you provide us with so many wonderful blessings when we're obedient. You give us life, you give us power, you give us strength and endurance. You know what we need, and as a good father, you provide that. And Lord, as we have been blessed in this world, we just ask that we'd be willing to give back to you, to give back to your kingdom, that we may take care of each other, that we may always rest in your provision and give you honor and glory and thanks for what you've provided for us. As we give today, we pray that you would bless it, help us to be more effective in your kingdom and to have the wisdom to use these funds wisely. We pray this all in Jesus' name, amen.
Dear God, thank you for the amazing day you've given us. Thank you for the nice air outside. And thank you for the love and care you're always giving us that's never ending. Thank you for forgiving our sins, even the ones we do not realize we've committed. And thank you for giving us this church to worship in. And thank you for everybody that just brings everything they have to this church every, every Sunday morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I have a few announcements uh, I'd like to share with you. Um, upcoming events uh, on November 12th is the Friendsgiving dinner. Uh, uh, Tracy Debbie Levante and Tracy Goslin are heading up that effort. If you have any questions, uh, see these ladies, and also there's a sign-up sheet in the back. And December 3rd, which is quickly approaching, is the addition, is the uh, Christmas party at the Scaries. Think about your favorite snack that you will bring for the potluck, and there will be a Yankee swap for those who want to participate. Uh, the limit is $15. It used to be 10, but due to inflation, it's gone up a little bit. <laughs> uh, building lockup, please, as you leave the main building or office, please be sure all the doors are locked and secure. Uh, there's been a few times that the building or one of the locks in your office is, is, hasn't been bolted. And it was pointed out to me this morning, when we locked that front door, make sure that the other door is bolted, that the little striker is up. Because there was a, a, what happened is that the door was locked, but that other door wasn't engaged, and somebody pulled on the doorknob, was able to open the door. So, a little thing, which I didn't think. Also, uh, the giving tree, that event that we do every year, provide gifts to people is that will be coming up. Uh, so think about how you might want to participate. Uh, if you know somebody who might need some assistance or would like to participate in, in the gifts, uh, let Melissa Therian, Kathy Fuelhelm, or Dave Scary know. They'll be publishing tags in the not too distant future. Uh, from Linda Paul, uh, Thanksgiving baskets, instead of the baskets themselves, we'll be giving out Aldi gift cards. So please give cash, check, or Aldi gift cards to Doug or Linda. And if you're in need of help for Thanksgiving or know someone who does, please let Linda Paul know by November 13th. And they will be given out on the 17th. Um, this Wednesday is our carpet cleaning, so after Wednesday night services, we need to move all these chairs out of here, usually up here. So that means we need some able-bodied men or women to, uh, to do that. So they'll clean the carpets on Thursday and Friday, and we have a light workday scheduled for Saturday. One of the tasks we'll be doing will be to replace all the chairs from here out there. Remember the coffee fund? That that little container needs to be fed. Uh, and also remember, to, just to remind you about the Nigerian church building fund, that container's out in the back. If you have a few bucks uh, to help them out, please uh, do what you can. The cars that uh, Danny mentioned that Dave Scary had made up, they're available out in the foyer. 
And one last announcement. The husband of one of our members, dear Candy Chase, Randy, who has served in the fire services for many, many years, is retiring effective tomorrow. Today is his last shift. And uh, it's, as much as it pains me as a police officer to speak well of a fireman, <laughs> I think I would be remiss in not paying due homage, due homage to a fellow first responder. Randy has uh, served the community of Derry well for the many years. He has saved lives. Nobody knows how many. He has served faithfully the citizens of Derry. He's a good guy. He's a brave guy. And uh, his retirement is well deserved. So uh, send him a card, send congratulations, let Candy know how much we appreciate his service. And uh, Wednesday, there will be a supper before a devotional, uh, Cordon Bleu, as I understand it. I think that is all. We will dismiss, start class at 11. We're dismissed.